Next month, one of my personal favorite shows is going to make its return to television. Set in the far-off future, but not a heroic adventure, the show follows the travels of the presumably last human being in the universe. With a holographic bunk mate and a creature evolved from a pet cat. That's right, we're talking about the glorious sci-fi comedy Red Dwarf. I'm Olav, and welcome to Geek Trivia. series actually has its base in British radio. It's based on the five-sketch radio broadcast named Dave Holland's Space Cadet. This was produced by Rob Grant and Doug Naylor in 1984. In the radio show, there is only one lonely human with the ship's computer Hab as his only steady companion. The pair changed it from 7 trillion years being marooned to 7 billion years, and then finally to 3 million years. They also added in a hologram bunkmate, Arnold Rimmer, and a humanoid feline known only as the Cat. The name Dave Hollins was changed to Dave Lister, and Hab became Holly, and Red Dwarf was born. The show saved a lot of money on production because it was mostly based on the mining ship with the same name as the show. So there weren't a lot of sets that were needed. The drive room, a classroom, the bedroom, and a few hallways, and they were pretty well set. Of course they visit some planets at times and other ships, but those were kept to a relative minimum. The basis is that the main character, Dave Lister, is put into stasis due to bringing a cat on board without permission and examinations for disease. While in stasis, the plating on the ship's drive was improperly repaired by his bunkmate, Arnold Rimmer, so the entire crew was wiped out. Holly, the ship's computer, revives Lister after three million years, or once the radiation dies down. His cat, which was pregnant at the time he was put into stasis, was protected in the ship's hold, and has quite a lineage. All the breeding and inbreeding evolved into Danny Don Jules, very humanoid in appearance, but with cat-like tendencies of grooming, exploration, and being greedy. Holly also has enough power to bring back one of the crew as a hologram. Lister's bunkmate, the person he's talked to the most, is brought back to help keep him sane. This seems to be insane as the two never really get along originally and spend most of their time irritating each other. At the end of the first show, Lister decides to turn the ship around and make the long trek back to Earth. Now the show states that Lister is the last human in the universe, which is never really proven. An argument could be made that there are still humans on Earth, though the counter-argument could be presented that they would have evolved past mere homo sapiens. While traveling back, they, of course, get into all kinds of adventures, such as future echoes of themselves, people from alternate dimensions, and even a ship crewed by holograms, rogue robots, and genetically engineered life forms. We'll go into the first couple of episodes of the show in a couple days for Geek Corner Review so we won't go too deeply into their adventures. They do meet up with, and eventually recruit, a Series 4000 mechanoid known as Crichton. He's a prissy little robot that always does what a human tells him. Originally played by David Ross, but then replaced by Robert Llewellyn when the character joined the crew fully. Crichton has a desire to be more human, which includes the abilities to lie, be mean to others, and do everything that humans can do. He actually does manage to become human during one of the shows, but realizes that having a human body doesn't make him happy. He needs to get there on his own. 
Speaking of actors, did you know that the actors playing Lister and Rimmer were switched from their auditions? Originally, Chris Berry, who voiced the computer Hab in the radio show, auditioned for the character of Lister, and Craig Charles tried out for the role of Rimmer. The two were cast, but as the opposite characters. They did get a chance to play the character they tried out for at one point, in the episode Mind Swap, Lister and Rimmer put their brains into the other person's body with the idea that Rimmer will tune up Lister's body. It doesn't go as planned, and the two get switched back to their original bodies, never to change again. Red Dwarf was very close to having a lawsuit brought against the BBC when it first aired. Sir Patrick Stewart was watching the show and felt that they were taking far too much from his show of the time Star Trek The Next Generation. In fact, while the show was on his TV, Stewart called up his lawyer and was already discussing the potential actions against the creators when something happened that completely changed his mind. He laughed. The fact that it was a comedy prevented any legal action. Now, not all the characters stayed the same throughout the show. For a time, Holly had a sex change, turning him into the parallel universe version. Also, the character of Kachansky, Lister's love interest, changed actresses before she was introduced to the crew on a more permanent basis. This is one change that led to some difficulties in storylines. For one thing, they changed the origin of Lister. Instead of having always pined for Kachansky and never having gotten up the guts to ask her out, they had a relationship and had broken up shortly before Lister went into stasis. Of course, as with any sci-fi series, the time travel, long space travel, wormholes, and all sorts of other things were used to explain the changes in the story. The question is, though, how come some of the time the characters realize that something has been retconned, and other times they never mention it at all? One of the changes that comes about is, after losing Red Dwarf for a while, they get it back, complete with crew. A bunch of nanobots rebuild the ship, but to its original specifications, before the Jupiter Mining Company made all their cutbacks and even rebuilt the crew, which actually made things difficult for Lister and friends. So that is a little view into the sci-fi comedy Red Dwarf. With the on-again, off-again status of the show, it's not too clear how long it will keep going. The BBC has obviously decided that it's a good idea and has an audience that they can make happy. I really hope this show keeps going. So what do you think of the show? Is it one that snuck in under your radar, or do you have a soft spot for the boys from the dwarf? Do you think that science fiction and comedy are a pairing that work well together, or do they go like napalm and suppositories? Leave a comment down below, a comment on our Facebook page, or send us a tweet and let us know. As always, Thank you very much for watching, and stay tuned for more from Olav Productions. If you want to see some crazy people, so lazy, then you should meet me and my friends. Even though we got no money, but show yourself funny. I don't yeah, appreciate you taking a poke at that. Like, I was the system, not my mom. I, I was going to say, dude. Their name to KFC in 1991. But the reason is much debated. The facts aren't nearly as interesting as the myths. 